How cells obtain energy? So um, on a daily basis, you're breathing oxygen and you breathe out CO2. Have you ever thought about where the CO2 is coming from or what we need the oxygen for? Well, of course, we need the oxygen for breathing, but uh, what does your body do to this oxygen and where is the CO2 coming from? So we eat food in order to power um, the energy that we need um, in our bodies to do to do the to be able to function every day and what happens to this food where our body breaks it down into small little pieces and then our individual cells take up these components and then using cellular respiration they transform the energy that is present in the molecule of these foods and turn turn it into another form of chem chemical energy called ATP, that's cellular respiration. Now, in order our cells to be able to um, do this transformation, they need oxygen. So that's one of the very important uses of oxygen that we breathe in. Now, when our cells break down these complex molecules, and we're going to focus on glucose for now, which comes in the form of carbohydrate. Uh, glucose is a six carbon molecule, and when our cells break it down, there through the cellular respiration process, our cells break it down into individual um, CO2 pieces. So we're, we're literally taking a glucose molecule that has six carbons and we're going to chop it down into its individual carbon molecules that are attached to oxygen at the end and then this is a byproduct of the process in our cells that allows us to obtain energy from our food so the co2 gets out into our lungs and then we breathe it out so that's i thought i'd give you an um, um, overview of where cellular respiration fits in within a living biological system such as yourself. So what does cellular respiration do? It converts chemical energy in food to chemical energy in ATP. And as I mentioned, if you look at the left-hand side, this is a molecule of glucose and our cells will use oxygen to break down this high energy molecule into these low energy smaller molecules and as a result lots of energy is released and that energy is used to uh, create ATP which is basically the fuel of our cells. So what you're looking at here is what's called the summary reaction for cellular respiration. This is C6H12O6 plus 6O2 gives us 6 CO2 and 6 water, 6 H2O. And in during this process, and this is shown as one reaction, but actually it's a series of reactions. It's actually a pathway. Uh, it gives us ATP. So what does ATP look like? Uh, you've met this molecule before when we talked about nucleic acids and if you remember nucleic acid is made up of ribose sugar a nitrogenous base and a phosphate except atp has three phosphates one next to another now why is it that this atp molecule has so much energy well take a look at these negatively charged oxygens and they're so snuggly and close together what do we know about like charges they repel one another so it really takes a lot of energy for the cell to bring these molecules these functional groups that have negative charges so close together that's why this atp molecule has so much energy so how does the cell use atp to fuel cellular work it usually involves breaking the last phosphate in the chain of phosphates and then transferring it to another molecule. So our cells uh, start with ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and through cellular respiration, a phosphate is added to ADP and we have this high energy molecule. 
And then when the time comes for the cell to do some work, either chemical work or mechanical work, the way it happens is our cells takes this last phosphate and transfers it to another molecule. In this case, this R represents another molecule. Now this molecule could be another chemical um, or it could be a protein where you add a phosphate to a protein and the energy in this uh, high energy bond um, changes the conformation of protein and drives some source of process in the cell. So you see you have this high energy molecule, it goes down to a low energy and this energy that is released derives this work that is supposed to be here. And if you remember, this is an exergonic reaction. So it would be a good idea to, for you to actually reproduce what you've seen here. It doesn't have to be so um, complex as it's written here. You can just uh, use this uh, or you can even replace this with the word base and reconstruct these steps. Creating the ADP from phosphate and ATP and then and then breaking down ATP to give you ADP and phosphate.